and welcome to video number five of the data representation series. In this video we're going to look at floating point numbers using a mantissa and an exponent. We're going to tackle four questions from the 2016 component one paper and the 2017 component one paper and this is the typical standard layout of those questions. In this question it asks in a certain computer system, real numbers are stored in floating point form using 12 bits as shown below. 8 bits are used for the mantissa and 4 bits are used for the exponent. Both the mantissa and exponent use 2's complement representation. Convert the number 2.375 into floating point form. Before we start this question, we need to talk about what floating points actually are. A floating point simply means a decimal point. Now every binary number after the decimal point gets halved every time, whereas everything to the left of the decimal point will double every time. So on the right hand side of the decimal point it starts at 0.5, then we half it again to 0.25, half it again to 0.125, half it again to 0.0625 and so on. And it gets a bit silly. The furthest down that I've seen on these papers is 0.0625. Now the question talks about this thing called a mantissa and an exponent. The mantissa of a number is the actual value and the exponent is how many places we move the decimal point. Now I'm trying to be as simple as possible because I don't want to confuse you. Now I've got a four step method that will help us tackle all of these questions. The first step is to convert the number given into binary using the smallest amount of bits. Step two is to normalize that number by placing a zero and a point in front of our number. Then we have to read the question to work out how many bits there are in the mantissa and then pad on the right hand side. And step four is then to work out what the exponent is and how far we have to move our decimal point in number of bits given in the exponent. Now obviously you might not know anything that I've just said. So let's have a look at that four steps applied in a question. Step one is nice and straightforward. I'll convert 2.375 into binary and that's 10.011 because I need a 0 0.25 and 0 0.125 to make my 375 at the end. Step two is to normalize the number. I'll normalize my number by placing a zero and a point at the front. Now notice I'll keep two decimal places in here. Don't worry about that, we'll fix that later. Step three is to pad my number with the required number of bits for the mantissa. And I get that from my question because it originally stated that 8 bits are used for the mantissa. So currently I've used 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bits. So all I need to do is add two zeros on the end of my number. And don't forget, always pad on the right hand side. For step 4, to work out my exponent, all I need to do is work out how many decimal places my first decimal point needs to move in order to get to my normalized point. And here I move one, two places and my question says you have four bits for the exponent and all I need to do is represent the number two using four bits. So that'll be zero, zero, one, zero. And then I just put the mantissa and the exponent in the boxes provided. And that's my final answer. It comes out as 01001100 with an exponent of 0010. Now don't worry if you're a little bit confused because practice makes perfect here. Getting used to using these four rules, if you do, will help you massively during these questions. So let's take another look at another one. So here the question asks, in a certain computer system, real numbers are stored in floating point form using two's complementation an 8-bit mantissa and a 4-bit exponent. Convert the number 8.75 into this floating point form. So the first step here is to convert 8.75 
into binary using the shortest amount of bits. And that comes out as 1000.111. Fairly straightforward so far. Step two, we normalize the number by putting a zero and a point in front of our number. That comes out as 0 0.1000.11. Again, don't worry about the second point at this stage. Step three is padding. And we're asked to represent an 8-bit mantissa. Currently, I've used 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So all I need to do is pad by putting a zero on the right-hand side of my number. Step four, to work out the exponent, I need to see how many places my right-hand decimal point needs to move in order to get to the normalized position. It travels one, two, three, four places, and I have a four-bit exponent to represent the number four. That comes out as zero, one, zero, zero. And once I've got those two, mantissa and exponent, all I need to do is write them in the box provided. My final answer should be 0 0.1000110 with an exponent of 0100. So how do we check our answers? Well, in the next question, you will see how to reverse engineer this process. The other type of question you could get is if the mantissa and exponent is already filled in. Now, this question is a bit tricky because students always fall down the same trap. In the same computer system, a floating point representation of a real number is shown below. Calculate the denary value of the mantissa and exponent and convert this floating point number into a denary number. Now the question asks you to calculate the denary number of the mantissa and exponent before we've applied our four step method. So what I would do is write the values above the boxes in the example given. You can write these as decimal points or you can write them as fractions, whatever is easiest for you because the mark scheme will accept both values. So what I will do is I'll demonstrate both methods but it's whatever you're most comfortable with here. And notice for the fractions, all of my fractions must have the same denominator. That's the value underneath the bar. And this is so I can add up my fractions later. By adding up all my decimal points, it gives me 0 0.9375, or in my fractions, it gives me 15 sixteenths. My exponent is straightforward. The value of that is five. And to work out the denary number of the floating point number, I'll count backwards the decimal point in normalized form and move that back five places. Once I've done that and moved it back five places, I can then place my values on top of the numbers. And the point will tell me on the left hand side, it will go up one, two, four, eight, sixteen, so on. And everything on the right of the point will go down by half, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, etc., etc. Then all I need to do is add up my values. And if we add up 16, 8, 4 and 2, that gives us the total of 30 in base 10 or deanery. In these questions, we'll get one mark for demonstrating the mantissa as a deanery number, one mark for the exponent as a deanery number and one mark for the binary floating point number as a deanery value. So that's three marks in total. Exactly the same process for this question. Calculate the deanery number of the value of the mantissa and exponent and convert the floating point number into a deanery number. So the first thing I do is I apply my numbers on the top to work out the deanery values of the mantissa. And I'll add the number 0.5 added to 0.125 and 0.0625. And that gives me a total of 0.6875. Or if you did it in fractions, that would be 11 sixteenths. So the value of the mantissa has been found. The value of the exponent is fairly straightforward. That is three. So that's already two marks in the bag. The last mark then comes from moving that decimal point three places backwards 
and then reapplying my numbers above the binary digits. Adding those numbers together, it gives me 4 plus 1 plus 0.5, and my deanery value for my floating point number is 5.5 in base 10. Over the past couple of videos, we've looked at a lot of different techniques now. Hopefully, you've got an idea of what to do for these questions. They appear to be quite similar. You need to practice maybe using the old specification questions and the new specification questions. And if you need any more help, you can contact me, email me, leave a comment down below, or come to the workshop or in class and ask me for some more questions to practice your skills. In the next video, I'll be going through truncation and rounding, and hopefully you'll join me there.